Hey everyone, quick back chemistry basics here. Let's talk about Maxim Gilbert method of DNA sequencing. The Maxim Gilbert method of DNA sequencing is based on the sequencing of nucleotides by cleavage at specific sites. These specific sites include cleavage at guanine, guanine and adenine, cytosine, cytosine and thiamine. The first step of this method involves radio labeling of the DNA which is to be sequenced. In this method, the phosphate at phi dash end of DNA is removed by using alkaline phosphatase enzyme. Then using an enzyme polynucleotide kinase and radiolabel ATP, the radiolabel P32 is transferred to the phi dash end. The labeling of DNA from the phi dash end allows the sequencing information to be obtained from the phi dash end of the DNA. The next step involves cleavage of polynucleotide chain at the specific basis. For this purpose, the polynucleotide chain is divided into four tubes. Each tube will have reagents that will cleave the polynucleotide chain at the specific site. This includes G, GNA, C, C and T. Let's talk about cleavage at G. For cleaving the polynucleotide at G, the guanine is methylated by dimethyl sulfate. When the methylated guanine is treated with hot piperidin, the sugar phosphate backbone gets cleaved. Cleavage at C Hydrazine in presence of 1.5 molar NaCl and piperidin will cleave the polynucleotide chain at cytosine. Cleavage at C and T Use of hydrazine and piperidin without NaCl will cleave at cytosine and thiamine. Cleavage at G and A Formic acid along with piperidin will cleave the polynucleotide chain at G and A. Once the DNA is cleaved at specific residues, the fragments are separated by using high-resolution polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. The gel will separate all the fragments present in the reaction mixture. However, we are only interested in the fragments having radio label P32. For this purpose, the gel is exposed to an X-ray film to perform autoradiography. This will detect only the radioactive fragments having P32. The electrophoresis is carried out for the samples of each tube side by side. Now as the smallest fragments are present at the bottom of the gel, we read the gel from the bottom. Now watch the gel, this is gonna be the first nucleotide. Lane 2 and 3 represent C and C plus T. Lane 2 and 3 have two bands, hence the first nucleotide is going to be C. Next, the lane 3 contains a single band which represents C plus T. However, there is no band in lane 2 which represents C. So the second nucleotide is going to be T. Next, lane 4 has a single band which represents G plus A. However, lane 1 doesn't have any band which represents G. So the third nucleotide is going to be A. Next, lane 1 and lane 4 has two bands. Lane 4 represents G plus A, whereas lane 1 represents G. So the fourth nucleotide is going to be G. For the fifth nucleotide, lane 2 and 3, which represent C and C plus T, have two bands. Hence, the fifth nucleotide is going to be C. For the sixth nucleotide, there is a single band in lane 3, which represents C plus T. However, there is no band in lane 2, which represents C. 
So the sixth nucleotide is gonna be T. The disadvantages of Maxim Gilbert method is that it is time consuming. Carrying out reactions at specific bases, cleaving them, and running the gel requires a lot of time. Also, as the size of sequencing DNA fragment increases, large gels are required for the separation. Such large gels are difficult to handle. The use of toxic and radioactive chemicals is another disadvantage of Maxim Gilbert method. Hence, this method is unpopular nowadays and rarely used as several other sequencing techniques are available.